morning. I want to make this very quick video about something that makes America great. And we often hear about in America how our financial economy is a free market. There's another free market in America that I think people forget about. And that's the spiritual free market. What do I mean by that? When you compare American religion to religion really anywhere else in the world, the American ideal of religious freedom, the Jeffersonian ideal of religious freedom, it's not only brought out the best of America, but has brought out the best in religion. Again, what do I mean by that? Often people will say, you know, religion is the source of all the wars. It's not true. You know, maybe, maybe a third of the wars. And it's also probably not true. Mostly it's politics cause the wars and religion is just an excuse. But that's neither here nor there. The uh, people will say, you know, there's all this corruption from religion and and so forth. <coughs> difference between America and every other country is what Jefferson called the wall of separation between church and state, which, again, it's not a, con a, a concept that we find in the Constitution, but the way that Jefferson, and it's been misinterpreted in the 20th century and the 21st century, has continued in the folly of the 20th century misinterpretation of it. However, when we talk about, in America, the separation of church and state, we're not talking about how in countries like France and Turkey that we have a government that's hostile or indifferent to religion. All it means is that we don't have one single official religion. And secularism is also a religious expression. Even though it's not an organized religion, it is a form of religious expression, and therefore secularism, atheism, agnosticism, and so forth, cannot be the official religion either. And by, by doing this, it's also um, it's also quote-unquote the official religion. Uh, essentially in, in countries like France and, um, and Turkey where you have an absolute separation between religion and state, there's a, there's a particular purpose why Jefferson said the words church and state and not religion and state, meaning there are many churches, meaning we don't have one single church. That's the point. Even though these other countries recognize religious minorities, but all of those minorities are... Um, you know, in a, in a sense, you know, inferior, we'll say, to the official religion, whether or not it's the majority religion, uh, in a certain sense, even though, you know, there there's a sense of official recognition or official permission, meaning essentially, in England, for example, even though most people are not religious, but the way the government is set up, the fact that other religions exist in England, whether whether it's um, you know Jews, Catholics, Muslims, evangelicals, and so forth, and atheists and so forth, it's only really by permission and the grace of the Church of England that is allowing this and giving permission for this to exist. Same thing in Israel. Uh, to a certain extent, although it's not as as much so in Israel, because you know the Rabbanu, even though it's a government, they work for the government. It's not like how in, in England the Queen is the head of the church. Um, but similarly, I remember I had applied to be the chief rabbi of Munich. One thing they said is I'd have to I couldn't wear a strimal in public. That's fine. I said I'll wear it at home. You know. Um, 
and I understand that, you know, that's, uh, that, that's, uh, you know, for Germany, that makes sense, but more than that, what they said to me is, is as follows, is that all the religions are funneled through the government, meaning religion in Germany, in most of these European countries, are essentially, social, essentially socialized religion. Um, and so there's no religious freedom, uh, meaning each of these groups have the freedom to, you know, petition the government to have recognition, and it's generally granted, and that's how it is. Whether it's in England, whether it's in Germany, whether it's in, whether it's in Israel, all these countries, but the religions are directly funneled through the government. You have there in those countries socialized religion. Um, and then in these other countries like France and Turkey, it's, well, you can't walk into a government building wearing any religious paraphernalia, whether it be a cross, whether it be a yarmulke, whether it be hijab. Um, America is radically different. In America, we have a total free market religious system. I would say our religious system is, is even more free market than our financial system. And that has brought out the best in religion because all of the corruption of religion comes from when the government and the church are one entity. And that also makes people have a bad taste in their mouth for religion. I mean, look in Israel. People are not interested in religion because they... Not because of an issue with the religion, but the issue with the government, really. And 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 the fact that they're upset that the government and the religion are one entity. Um, so to the, uh, you know, and, and yet in America, we have the opportunity each religion has the opportunity to do what's right and what's wrong. And the people have the freedom to get up and leave the religion that's corrupt and find their own religion, express their religion in a different way. Nobody has to pay any fealty to the religious hierarchy that exists in America. Each individual is free to start their own religion to start their own branch of an existing religion. Now, obviously, the existing religious hierarchy will say that as far as we're concerned, you're heretics and so forth, which is also part of their freedom. Um, but it also makes them have to look back at themselves. You know, I, I remember there's a radio show, Religion on the, Religion on the Line, and you have a Catholic deacon and a, and a rabbi and the, the, the deacon, as a Catholic, he said that the, Pro, the Protestant Reformation was the best thing that ever happened to the Catholic Church. Why? Because it woke them up. They can't rest on their laurels. They have to reform. So too, in a sense, Orthodox Judaism had a wake-up call when these other, uh, these heretical groups developed of how to adapt and how to exist in society. Um, even the most ultra-Orthodox have been changed by this fact of these other groups and so forth. But more than that, but within the groups, you know, anybody can get up and open a church, open a synagogue, open a mosque, and nobody can stop them, including the other churches, you know, um, who might oppose them. But, they, but we have freedom to do what we want, you know. And so if, you know, you know, you know in, in Aramont, New York, you know, Lipa Schmelzer, he wants to express his own brand. He, he, he left New Square and he went to, to Aramont and he wants to express his own type of, of, uh, of Judaism which is Orthodox and Hasidic, but very different than he was raised with, America gives him that power. America makes it possible. If in Modesta, California, they want to start the Universal Life Church and 
ordain people online and give doctorates and, uh, and, and, and master's degrees and so forth. They have the right to do so, and so does just about anybody else. So, essentially, and if a particular church doesn't want to recognize that, they also have the, the right to do that. If a particular synagogue doesn't want to recognize the other synagogue, they have the right to do that. But what it means is that each group cannot rest on its laurels because the government doesn't have their back, as they do in these other countries. And everybody has the freedom to do what they want. And so corruption gets exposed, and people get up and leave if there's corruption. And they have the freedom to do something else. And that is because of America. That is a purely American idea. And so I think that's why America is different than the other countries. And I'm thankful for that. Even if things are not going always my way, but the fact that I can express myself my way and you can express yourself your way what could be better what could be better we don't have to worry that you know all right so the government supports this this religious program but what if they change their mind tomorrow and then what do we do you know it's like uh, Begin approached Rav Shach and he said you know I want to uh, start supporting the yeshivas Never was before. Rav Shach asked, Rav Shach asked, well, uh, how much you want to give? He said, I want to give everything. He said, no, 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 no. Then you'll destroy us. We're, we, we need something, so all right, we'll accept something. But we, we can't, can't take everything. No. Because when the next guy comes along who isn't Begin, what's going to be? All right. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And and that, and then we saw what happened when things got bad, and how the yeshivas suffered. And all right, they had to get up and go collect money in America to keep their doors open, which is probably what they should have done to begin with, if if they should have even gone there, at all, uh, to the Holy Land. They probably should have stayed in America. But that's neither here nor there. When Mashiach comes, we can go back home. God can Okay, that's what I have to go to work. Thanks for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Be well.